Welcome to the very first edition of Spring Trends for this week. We appreciate you for joining us. My name is Evelyn Ohiola. And what we do on the show is we look at issues, situations trending all across Nigeria and beyond. What is trending? Where it is trending? Who is trending? And reactions on social media. One day we might as well take your own reaction. So ensure to keep tweeting, to keep, you know, sending messages on instagram and facebook we might just you know read your comments and do not forget to follow us on our facebook page at western spring television on instagram on TikTok, and on x at western spring television and of course you can watch us live on youtube at western spring television femi ojo is here welcome to the show femi my pleasure good to be here again yeah how was your weekend very well um quite uh, friday stroke Saturday was quite busy. So yeah. I had a rest on Saturday. Yes, it was it was a good one. Okay. So let's just get right into the show. Very well. Um the very first story this morning is talking about uh, you know recent announcement given by the NPF Nigeria Police Force given um vehicle owners or vehicle users um owners because you might be a user and not own a vehicle. So yeah. Let's just say vehicle owners, 14 days ultimatum. Possession is different from ownership. Exactly. To uh, register for ECMR. And, um, you know, they say that this particular registration will help to monitor um, all vehicles and it will also help for security's sake, for terrorism against banditry and all what you, what have you and what not. Of you reactions are decolleg badamosi says all this is just a way of making money from nigerians if it's not about solving crime why not making it free of charge if it's about solving crime why not making it free of charge and why does it have to be renewable it's like adekule does not know that um, um nothing is not free even in freetown you have to pay <laughs> for you have to pay for some things Most but that's his own take anyway try to nelson at Street and Nelson says they are just looking for ways to extort more money from Nigerians. Mm. NIN, BVN, SIM, registration, all of that, they cannot fight banditry, kidnapping, and terrorism. How is ECMR, ECRM registration different from the vehicle registration? Mm. They have access to the vehicle registration portal. And at Babam Baba at L, Mustafa J says, no amount of awareness will make me do this thing. Handle the risk security issues in the country and allow private companies to manage vehicle tracking. The case will be reported to the police when a car is stolen and the police will be alerted when the car is tracked. If you insist, then put it in your 2025 budget. Go to the NAS and defend it and avoid directly taxing the overtaxed citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that uh, Lekon Tefin, traditional Edo Pekin, says... Nothing you guys will say. It is robbery. The burden is on the citizens. If you really wanted to help, all registered vehicle already has uh, data. You could have shared with the registration. Instead, you're charging for a document that has to be presented on the road while driving. How will that really help? This is an avenue to milk the public. Femi, your thoughts. This registration, again, Nigerians really, I mean, all the comments I've taken this morning are Nigerians actually lamenting and condemning this new registration to be done by the Nigeria police. Uh, I think it is what it is that's been done. It's not entirely new. I think uh, last week um, the police uh, issued a statement that um, they are going on e, um, ECMR, by the way. And, but then for what it is, and I think many persons so from the position of the law have said, why should the police be doing that? that you have enough data available for any serious work to be done. Because the police said it will help them with um, car theft, um, security, administration, and if something is missing, they can actually go for it. But many persons will say you have enough already. This is just, um, you know, a way to extort mm -hmm. in a kind of way or to impoverish the more Nigerians. And that at this time, nothing should come as um, in um, the guise of you doing your work by making the people to pay okay. more. Yes, you might want to say maybe 5,000 Naira or in excess of 5,000 Naira, but then it's still money, especially for um, commercial uh, cab operators, 
private individuals and it, it is what we are I seeing. I mean, if we have time. 20 million car owners yeah. in Nigeria, multiply that by 5,000. That's a lot. That's, a lot. that's, that's running a lot into billions. And that's, the, that's how Nigerians will calculate it for them. Yes. Are, are you a revenue generating body? What exactly is your work? And with what we have, with what we are seeing, especially in the security part in which we even learned, and it has been alleged that some, some bandits now even have TikTok accounts. They are not hiding it. They flaunt guns. You see some of these um, apologies go to them. You see some journalists find their way to the enclave, the dens of the kidnappers, meaning they are not from heaven. They live somewhere, you know, by the way. Yeah, it might not be as easy as it sounds, but then they are whereabouts are known. Some of them grant interviews. They speak to the media in a kind of way, in their, under their own terms, by the way, but then crush these people yeah. available. Some of them take cash. Some of them take transfers. Some of them take bitcoins. At least these are some of the things we are hearing, although bitcoins cannot be traced. Yeah. That's why some of them take that. But then it is a lot. And Nigerians are not... You know why we are frowning? One, because of the economic implication. Number two, and to say that every available data, what are you doing with mm. it? If somebody say something online you, you know the uh, ppro has said give us two weeks we will find you mm -hmm. and i just will always hold him to that word to say you you can always make threat online to say you will find them many persons can be found online yeah. the moment they say we are coming for you, you come for them how about bandits go for them go and find them and that's why i just are, are saying that if it's about our data helping uh, your work's been helped by people registering or taking this permit, the ECMR, you have enough to do that work. Yeah. You don't need the e ECMR to do this, your particular work. Knowing fully well that people still have to pay for that as well. Okay, let's move over to the next uh, story this morning. It's Dangote versus NNPC. Yeah, yeah. And Dangote is saying that the NNPC uh, does not no longer owns 20% stake in Dangote refinery. I think it puts the figure at about 7 point uh, something percent. Mm. And now, yeah. uh, reactions, Philemon Kuza says, so what happened to the billions that it claimed to have invested? And Abakev Michael says, all of a sudden, NNPC's 20% disappears and reduced. This refinery is beginning to look like a scam, honestly. After government invested seriously in it, now their stakes have reduced. I smell a rat. And Oxley Technology says NNPC now hold 7.2% stake in Dangote refinery due to their failure to meet up with obligations in June 2024. Mm. Dangote is smartly making it public to avoid stories that touch. Meanwhile, federal government and NNPC have borrowed billions of dollars to buy up stake in the refinery, but only 7.2% was committed. And Omoyo at Anyon Lake 16 says petrol that Dangote himself said his refinery would commence sales of in July as we move to August again, I think is one of the underneath problems we face in Nigeria. And at Finjas Power mm -hmm. says NNPC borrowed money to buy 20% stake in the refinery but eventually paid for only 7%. Where is the rest of the money borrowed? Until the current leadership and management of NNPC leaves, we are wasting our time. Femi, your thoughts? 7.2% uh, um, yeah. uh, is uh, the figure that has been put that the federal government retains. And, you know, somebody was alleging scam. Mm -hmm. How can it then go to scam the federal government, by the way, so to speak? But then we know anything might have happened. There might be an agreement that are under the table kind of deal. So... It's not really far-fetched. But then it happens that you might have 20% and a company might offer you to say, let us buy it back. You know, so these things, the they, they trust deficit mm. between the people and the government will always make Be, people yeah, to, to second, second guess, guess yeah. every move to say, ah, they don't do posts, they, they lie. Mm. You know, they feel they lie. No, man, no, man, they, they lie. <laughs> now, truly, they, they lie. And then they start with and say, they know they lie, but they, they lie. But on this one, somebody can hold the stake, I, you know, you might offer money to say, instead of the 20%, can we buy 10% out of that? And if that has been done, if actually that is what has been done, by the time the company is coming public with it, mm -hmm. they will tell you what is remaining is only 10%. So it doesn't mean that that other party have been cheated. They might, in, it might have been monetized in other forms. So it's as good as that. It's not a big deal. 
Uh, but then is a private company. The 7.2% of the government is still something. We are talking about a multi-billion dollars company. Yeah. And so it's not a small feat. Don't let's forget it's a private company. The company have been helped, have, have been supported hugely by the by government. government. The company themselves, the management, Ali Kodangote himself, has said that severally. Uh, the former CBN governor who is in the eye of the storm, Nagodino Mephili, has said it. Many persons know that because of what he represents, and the kind of help it could bring to that sector, yeah. that place, that particular company was supported. But then, maybe they have been able to pay back most of what they are owing. And if 7.2% is directly what is remaining for the federal government, so be it. Okay. But the caveat is this. Let's make sure everything has been done the right way. The right Nobody way. has gone to agree. Mm. Or they have been cutting deals for themselves personally yeah. using the um, federal government as a front. That is, that is what we would not like to see. I mean, the, you spoke to the distrust between the people and the government yeah, earlier, and it, this would yeah. always come to it play continue. at any point Those in Those in charge are not giving us a reason to change our mind. Mm. All right, we head on to USA at this time. What happened at the weekend? You can see the 44th president of the United States, Donald Trump, lifting his fist up after that incident that happened that almost cost him his life. It mm. was a narrow escape for um, you know, the Republican candidate uh, where that shot slightly just, it was his ear, his ear had to pay for it. But mm. they say in Yoruba, Ikuto Shininifila. Mm. That, that, let me translate it. I, I, my, my Yoruba might not be that good. Ikuto <laughs> Shininifila, uh, That the death that was supposed to take your mm. life, but you know, Took away your cap. Mm. It, this one, I, now I hear you, bro. So, he, at least he should be grateful <laughs> and thankful that he still has his life intact. Yeah. All right, the story right now says um, this statement is from Donald J. Trump after that unfortunate incident. It says, I want to thank the United States Secret Service and all of law enforcement for their rapid response on the shooting that just took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. Most importantly, I want to extend my condolences to the family of the person at the rally who was killed and also to the family of another person that was badly injured. It is incredible that such an act can take place in our country. Nothing is known at this time about the shooter who is now dead. I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right hair. I knew immediately that something was wrong in that I had a wheezing sound, shot, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening. God bless America. Mm. He ended with that, um, you know, statement. And there have been you know, controversies as to um, if that particular incident was staged or not. Um, is Donald Trump trying to gather uh, sympathy votes and all? And also witnesses, eyewitnesses uh, that were interviewed by newsmen said they saw the, the shooter mm. and they were trying to call the attention of the security persons to look at this person, but they didn't, you know, they, 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 they didn't, didn't oblige, they them. Did not oblige them. So um, until that unfortunate incident happened, which actually claimed a life and also some other person was injured and mm. we heard that the shooter was also gunned down. Yeah. But we would hear more information as the days and weeks go by. Vipin Tiwari says, how is it possible that someone can just come and shoot at an ex-president? And what were the security personnel doing? This person is making it to look at the person girls arrive in front of Trump. They call shooting it. <laughs> and um, our own numero uno yeah. from... One president to a former president uh, and an aspiring one uh, says, uh, Balak Matinibu says, the attack on former President Donald Trump is distasteful and goes beyond the pale of democratic norms. Violence has no place in democracy. That's all. I extend my sympathies to the former president and wish him relief. I also condole with the family of the deceased and those wounded and wish them a quick recovery. Nigeria stands in solidarity with the United States of America at this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Patriot Oasis says he literally dodged a bullet. God is on Trump's side. Uh -uh. And Zaki Soldier says innocent people were shot. 
very, very sad. Pardon me. Your thoughts very quickly, Femi. Uh, I think my thought aligns uh, with um, that of many persons who feel that security um, at that ground uh, in uh, Pennsylvania uh, was a mm. big compromised because mm. uh, there have been reports, there have been videos of people. In fact, there was a particular video that caught um, that particular shooter almost immediately before the shooting. People were saying, oh, he's got a gun. Mm. Oh, he's got a gun. And um, there was an individual, I saw the video, who, who mm. was bold enough to say, I, I told the police, mm. I told them that we saw somebody with a gun crawling, you know, in a particular, particular building. And mm. just a few minutes after that, uh, gunshot rented the air. And, but it's good to see that he's, um, he dodged the bullet, so to yeah. speak, because there have been different um, analysis to say maybe he turned, and that was what saved him at that particular point. But sadly, somebody died. Um, unnecessarily. And then the, the gunman has been shot and killed. Uh, one 20 year old Matthew Crooks. And many persons have been saying, What is the motive? But we don't want to preempt anything. Um, it would have been a different story to hear that somebody of that status, you know, um, was fatally injured. Um, but then it is not what it is. And the condemnation has been about political violence. It ah. has no place in democracy. And Nigeria has to say hi. It has no place, and that is what it is. You know course, what I'm saying. As you can see what our president said there, violence has no place ah. in our democratic setting. Never. Never, ever. We move on to our next story. We are short for um, press for time, so we're just going to take this very quickly. Um, some religious organizations are more corrupt than public offices. This is a comment made by FCC Chairman Olao Luko Yede, who watched this video audio. and come back to take reactions. I want to play with those who are religious just leaders. leaders. Let, Let us use, use our podium, podium. Not, not only to, to preach, but to demonstrate. Just this, this last, last week, our part was to recover how many millions from a religious, religious organization. organization. You appointed you a pastor, you used use the opportunity to. That's, that's when you become, become a big, big man. man. We, we don't, don't even know what you are doing to any living. Let you be on your own. You live on the people, on the ministry, on the church, on the on the mosque. Can't even explain, explain your, your wealth, wealth. The source of your wealth. If you, if you are, are not accountable, accountable as a religious person, and you expect a public officer to be accountable, people, people of God, you want to hear the truth? Some religious organizations are more corrupt than, than public offices. I have evidence, evidence towards that. that. Very good evidence. It may, it may not be expedient for me to say all that. Yeah. But, but let us go home with that. that. You, you look at the speck in somebody's eyes. Meanwhile, in your own eyes, there is a log. We preach this thing on the altar. But under our nose, the same thing happens. And sometimes we try to cover up. It's our own. Let us deal with it now. And when, when it is public officer, officer we, we go, go. All, all of us start to banter us. We would not ourselves say good. No, we are not. I want to plead with those who are religious leaders. Let us use our podium, not only to preach, but to demonstrate. Just this last week, I've had cause to... All right, we'll take reactions at this time. At call me underscore Luan, he says, Shen are religious organizations, they steal billions of Nigerians' money, Abi. L-O-L says, peak fooling. That's from Luani there. And Africa Confidential says... Of course, he's right. But guess what the difference is? The public officials are accountable to the entire public, while the religious leaders are only accountable to their members. This guy is fast becoming a noisemaker. Seems to me like he has realized the public officials, for the most part, are untouchable under the right circumstances. So he's trying to deflect by looking for the easier targets and making it, and making it appear like he's doing such a remarkable job of fighting corruption. Sir, no one is falling for it. Well, no one with the capability of reasoning for themselves anyway. So, nice try. And Mr. Ebony says, can the EFCC chairman arrest Yaya Bello already or tender his resignation as he promised? There is a need to beam a satellite on the finances of the church. They are aiding and abetting corruption in government circles and are beneficiary of illegal wealth amongst some of their members. Daniel Rega, my guy, says, the EFCC chairman should focus on his job. Religious organizations should be the least of his concern right now unless it's been linked to political looters. His act of selective justice is nothing but sickening and reeks of gross incompetence. How about arresting Yaya Bello? Let him start there. Femi, your thoughts? Uh, very quickly, uh, I think uh, he said that, Olo Lukoyede, the chair of the FCC, um, you know, he claimed that religious organizations mm. are more corrupt, mm. using his words, mm. than public offices in Nigeria. And I'm sure many Nigerians say, excuse you. And uh, he spoke at the Redeemed Christian Church of God Leadership Conference in Lagos mm. on Friday. And he said, the speckle in someone else's eye, but meanwhile, there is a log in your own eyes. He was accusing the religious leaders that he should start inwardly. Mm. Don't just speak about public officers. Yeah. And he said, just last week, I've had cause to recover how many millions from a religious organization. They appointed you a pastor. 
and that is when you become a big man. You live on the ministry and the church or mosque, you can't even explain the source of the wealth. You know, fair enough, two truths can coexist. Yeah. There might be yeah, corruption, either is in a religious place, it should be condemned, it should be investigated as well. But then, all look at it, mm. many Nigerians are saying, it's like you are talking too much. Do the do. And if you ask me, it's looking like explain to the gallery. Yeah. This, is my, this, is, this is my observation. I might be wrong. Do the work, not just the talking. Yeah. There are people, I profile people that I just want to see. Yeah. Let them arrest them. Let them have their day in, in court. court. We have the case of Yaya Bello. We have the case of Dr. Better Edu. Yeah. You know, a lot of Sadiq cases, Farouk. Sadiq Farouk, we, a lot of cases that we need him to actually right. continue, especially that statement he made mm. concerning that of Yaya Bello that he will see to the end of that mm. case and if he wouldn't, he will tender his he resignation. So, Mr. Allah Lukoyede, we are asking you, where is the white lion himself, yeah. Yaya Bello? That is the size of the show today. Thank you for being a part of our world this morning. We'll make a return tomorrow for another interesting time on Spring Trends. Thank you, Femi, for coming. My pleasure. My name is Evelyn Ohiole. Until tomorrow, have yourself a good and productive day.